The internet protocol is an extremely important portion of the TCP IP protocol stack because it is what determines where your traffic is going to be routed and it does this based on the destination address. Now the internet protocol does operate at layer 3 of the OSI model and it would be considered layer 2 of the TCP IP protocol stack, the internet layer. It's a connectionless protocol and that characteristic means that traffic is sent one way and it's sent without notifying the destination device in advance. The destination device is going to get that data and he's not going to reply back and say, hey, I got this. We're going to leave that up to the TCP protocol if the connection is deemed to be reliable. So IP doesn't worry about any sequencing and acknowledgments of the datagrams that it sends. Now IP uses a hierarchical addressing. It is a 32-bit number. Part of that number is what we call a network ID, and the other part of that number is the host ID. Now the network portion is kind of like a street that you live on if you were considering an address. The host ID portion of the address is the house number. Having a separation like this allows us to route traffic towards a street and then once we get to that street be more specific and find the house. In networking terms we would route traffic towards a network. Once we're on that network we look for a specific host. The service that IP provides is best effort. It doesn't guarantee that the packet will be delivered. A packet could be dropped along the way, it could be duplicated along the way, it could be routed in the wrong direction. Again, IP does not provide any reliable service. Instead, if we need reliability, we're going to leave that up to our upper layer protocol. Recall that we said that traffic that is passed down the protocol stack receives a header and the header contains information that's relevant to that layer and it's used for providing service to the layer above. It's important to understand the IP header format because attackers can manipulate those fields in an IP header and use that as an attack vector. So as an analyst you certainly want to be familiar with the different fields inside of an IP header. In this graphic we do see an IP header with a number of different fields. We'll go through each of these fields, just explaining what they do. The first field we have is the version field. This is a 4-bit field, and it tells me what version of IP is being used. Right now, we use IP version 4. The next field we have is deemed IHL, or IP header length. This also is a 4-bit field, and it contains the length of the entire IP header. This minimum length for an IP header is 20 bytes. So as you can see in this graphic, we have the first two fields, which are 4-bit fields. Those two fields combined together equal 1 byte, or 8 bits. The next field we have is the service type. We call this the TOS, or Type of Service field. This is an 8-bit field, and in traditional networking, we use three of those bits as what's called an IP precedence value. IP precedence value can be used for providing quality of service. Nowadays we use differentiated service code points, which is six bits of that field, with the remaining two bits used for explicit congestion notification. Using DSCP rather than IP precedence provides for a larger number of differentiations between packets allowing you to provide different levels of service. The next field we have is the packet length. Now this is the entire length of the packet. It includes the 20 byte IP header as well as all of the user data that is encapsulated inside here. This field is two bytes long and the maximum size that we could ever see an IP packet being would be 65,535 bytes. This is followed by the identification field, the flags field, and the fragment offset field. When we're passing an IP packet throughout a network, it might go through different devices that can't handle the size of the packet, in which case the packet will need to be fragmented. If the packet needs to be fragmented, it's divided into smaller chunks, and each of those chunks can then be collected and reassembled at a later time. 
we use these three fields to mark the packets, identifying them as fragments, and then we use the information in the identification, flag, and fragment offset fields to reassemble those packets at the destination. The next field is the time to live field. The time to live field, or TTL as it's called for short, is used to make sure that this packet does not move through the network endlessly. If there's a routing loop, then potentially a packet could be sent back and forth over and over again, and without the use of a time to live field, the packet would never be discarded, and it would be forwarded forever. So the TTL field is a value that decrements at each layer 3 hop. It's initially set to a number, sometimes this number will be 30, and at each hop we'll decrement that by 1, and once the TTL value reaches 0, the packet can be discarded. This is a field that we can control in some implementations. The next field we have is the protocol field. So for example, if we are using protocol number 1, that would indicate that this is an ICMP packet, and the ICMP protocol is being used. We use ICMP for testing connectivity and also for relating errors. This protocol field is often set to a value of 6, which indicates that the upper layer protocol is TCP, or protocol 17, which indicates that the upper layer protocol is UDP. That's followed by a header checksum. That header checksum is just a value that gets calculated based on the contents of the header itself. This is used to determine if there's been an error while this packet has been forwarded. The two fields that follow the header checksum are important fields. The source IP address, which is the 32-bit identifier of the sender, followed by the destination IP address, which is the 32-bit IP address of the recipient. In standard IP routing, routers are going to reference the destination address field. In source-based routing, routers would reference the source address field. These two fields are followed by the options and padding fields. This is a field that varies in length from 0 to some multiple of 32 bits. And if the option values are not a multiple of 32 bits, we're going to pad that with a number of zeros so that we can make sure that the header itself mates the minimum 20 byte size.